All right, everybody, welcome again to this Inside Sports production. This is the Picks of the Week. We are finally down to the Super Bowl. The tournament started with 12. The 12 have come down to the final two. I'm Charles E. Smith, Jr., and proud to be joined now by our man out there in Arizona, my main man, Sean Goyle. Sean, talk to me, homeboy. Hey, Chuck, I'm doing real good, man, out here right now. <laughs> Getting excited about the Super Bowl coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, we also got, uh, you know, I'm going to throw this in there. I know, fans we're talking about Super Bowl, but we got the NHL All-Star game coming up on Sunday. It's exciting. It's getting hot, and I'm ready to talk about the Super Bowl. So let's get down to it. All right, man. Well, we can't talk about the game coming up without talking about the games that just passed, of course. So let's talk about those uh, AFC and NFC championship games. First of all, the Patriots are headed back yet again. Tom Brady, Wes Welker, uh, Gronkowski, everybody, they're headed back now, man. Yeah, you know, I, I agree. They definitely are. And, um, you know, the Patriots beat a really stunned Ravens, Ravens team. You know, you saw, you saw that kick being missed by Billy Cundiff that everybody saw. You saw the look on Ray Reichel's face and also just on uh, T. Sizzle's face. It was a harsh right. loss for Baltimore. Well, you know what? Here's the thing about Baltimore is we talk about Billy Cundiff, but here's Lee Evans. A chance to win the game with 22 seconds left. All he has to do is make this catch and just fall to the ground with it and end the play. He doesn't do that. He gets the ball. He stands up with it, winds up getting stripped by Sterling Moore, and then 11 seconds later, kind of shanks that kick, which would have sent the game into overtime. And just to quantify this for you, now Brady – Threw for 234 yards, but no touchdown passes, two interceptions. The Patriots also lost the turnover battle. They had three turnovers. The Ravens only had one. They got outgained, 398 to 330. They, the Ravens had more passing yards. They had more rushing yards, but they did not win the game. Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, like we were discussing before we got on, was this is a whole Bartman situation, just like with the Cubby. Uh, back, back then, a couple of years ago, when Bartman dropped that uh, pass, uh, excuse me, the, the ball was coming over, he dropped it, made, yeah. made it so it wasn't possible for the catch to happen, and he was the escape goat. And that's really what happened to Billy Cundiff over this past week. You know, he was getting threats, um, telling people were telling him to get out of the state. You know, it's a harsh thing to happen, but... You know, Baltimore had multiple chances to put up points, and they had multiple chances to stop the, the Patriots, which they really did. Tom Brady had no touchdowns passing, you're right. He threw an interception. He even said it after the game. He sucked. But luckily, they're going to be still going to the Super Bowl. It's a shame that Baltimore wasn't able to, to finish strong the way they wanted to. But, uh, you know, it just goes to show you, one or two plays is all it takes to keep you out of the Super Bowl. Definitely. And, you know, this man, Ray Lewis, the warrior in the middle for Baltimore, how many seasons has he got in him? Some people say he should have retired a couple years ago. He was clearly heartbroken after the game, even though he refused to lay any blame anywhere. But Ray Lewis and also Ed Reed, who does not have a ring, by the way, he's getting beat up back there. He's nearing the end of his career. How much has this Ravens group got left in them? Well, I, I'm going to say they still have a pretty strong fight in them. Uh, Ray Rice is a strong young player. Joe Flacco has definitely uh, proven to everyone that he is a strong quarterback, and he was chosen over Brady as the strong quarterback going into this game. Um, they still got a strong defense. Yes, Ed Reed is getting beat up back there, but hey, that's football without getting beat up a little bit. <laughs> and, you know, and, and as for... Um, as for Ray Lewis, yes, he's getting old, up to that nice ripe age. Of, what is it, like thirty something now? Um, but right, that's old in football that, years. Exactly, the ripe old age. I mean, he's he's turning into one of our gray beards that we love to see all the time. And basically, what I say is, is I feel he's got one more good season left in him, and I still feel that the Ravens will have a strong push in the playoffs next year as well. All right, perfect. 
So let's go from the fiasco that was the Ravens and Patriots game to the Bay Area, the Giants and the 49ers. Eli Manning and his uh, his blue, uh, excuse me, and Big Blue came away victorious 20 to 17 in overtime. Now when you talk about threats, Kyle Williams who was in returning punts for the 49ers, he actually received death threats over Twitter. They wished his family died, all kinds of really inappropriate stuff. So they were heartbroken up there in the Bay Area. He muffed a punt early in the game and then of course the fumble in overtime that really uh, did it and then the Giants go ahead and score the winning Lawrence Tynes again from 31 yards out five plays later Giants win the game yeah and it, it was really really harsh for the for the San Francisco 49ers to see Kyle Williams just mm -hmm. repeatedly mess up a must punt then the touched ball and I, I mean it was just so many mess ups one after another and sometimes it just happens like that and with Kyle Williams, he, like you're, you're right, he got those death threats, he got serious um, abuse put at him. And you know right. what's even worse? I don't think he's going to be back on the Niners next year because Harbaugh has to know that he can trust the person in this, uh, on the backfield there. And well, he Kyle was Williams, filling in for Ted Ginn. Right, right. He was filling so, in for Ted Ginn, who, who's supposed to be back there. But again, this is a game where you have to be prepared for anything. You know, right now they've got, think about this, and he's just a perfect example. They've used Ron Gronkowski on the Patriots, not only as a tight end, but also as a wide receiver, a running back, and a fullback. This player is playing multiple positions and still able to produce. Unfortunately right. for Kyle Williams, it just didn't happen in this game, and it was really harsh. And here's one thing that I, I think is just perfect to say about Eli. At the beginning of the year, he even said, I am an elite quarterback. I think I'm up there with Tom Brady and Ben Roethlisberger and all of them. And mm -hmm. one thing that I have noticed is you can't spell elite without Eli. And he's a great <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> you know, and he really, well, he really put up a great game, too. I mean, 32 of 58, 316 yards and two touchdowns. He did a great job. Well, as I saw someone on one of the social networking sites they said, you can't spell Pelican without Eli, so what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the, reason I bring up, here's the reason I bring up the word elite. Everyone I know. I know why you bring it up, man. Exactly. You know why. <laughs> we all saw what he did in 2007 against the Patriots. And hopefully now we, we get to see them running into it again. All right, so we covered the bonehead plays of the week, Lee Evans, Billy Cundiff, uh, Kyle Williams, all of them are going to have a long off season. And the problem about wait till next year is it takes a whole 12 months to get there. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it takes all year. And you can even look into Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers when they were just warming up um, after uh, after the games on uh, Monday. They went and did reports, and you can see on their faces how distraught and sad they were because now you have to live with for the next six to eight months with these losses. Just these one losses can ruin the, your rest of the year. Right, and the other thing is they're going to go through a 16-game preseason next year, too. <laughs> yeah, because both teams will be in the playoffs. <laughs> exactly. You know what, let's go ahead and get to our picks. We're going to do our picks of the week here. So first, let's go ahead and review where we are. Right now, we both picked the Patriots and the Giants last week. Overall, I am seven and three. You are eight and two. And you know that the game that is the separating is you picked Denver over the Steelers. <laughs> I took the Steelers, and that one may sink me, depending on how our picks turn out this week. <laughs> and you know, well, I wanted to know. say something to everybody. We do our pick segment honestly. Now, it's not about me necessarily trying to catch up to you, so I'm going to make a mathematical pick. We keep it real. We tell you who we really think are going to win these games, and we maintain the integrity here at Inside Sports. Ain't that right, my brother? That's absolutely right, because you can see that I was right about um, them beating <laughs> Pittsburgh, but I was completely wrong about them losing to the Patriots. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you rode that T-Bow train just one stop too many there, homeboy. Yeah, I guess I should have gotten off at the last one. Pittsburgh, too bad. All right, let's get into it. Here's the matchup. The Giants and the Patriots for all the marbles. Last week, Giants won, beat the Niners 20-17. We know what the Patriots did. How do we match this thing up? Is it the Giants' offense more against the Patriots' defense, or is the bigger matchup the Patriots' offense against the Giants' defense? Well, before, before we even get into that, the one thing that fans need to know and some people may not know yet is that this Patriot and Giants team is a completely different team than the 2007 team. And I mean that by personnel-wise. Uh, both teams only have about 12 returning veterans from, that, from those Super Bowl teams uh, coming back in this game. Now, saying that, it's really weird because these two teams look very similar to the 2017. Uh, the Giants Correct. were making a wild run, and they came out of nowhere. Eli Manning's getting hot as heck. Tom Brady's not doing very good in the playoffs, just like he did uh, in the 2007 um, playoffs. And then he started picking it up a little bit in the Super Bowl. And in this game, I, I don't feel that it's going to be um, the, the Patriots' defense overpowering the Giants in any way. The Giants are definitely going to have to uh, are definitely going to have the overpowering on offense over that defense, and they're also going to win the defensive battle over the Patriots' offense because right now that four man rush that they have set up for the New York Giants and that great pass rush that they set up for uh, called NASCAR. They actually have a play called NASCAR where each one of them is rushing to the finish line, and that finish line is Tom Brady, and each one of them has crossed that goal at least once. <laughs> There you go. And as we look at the matchups here, when you talk about two hot teams, the Giants have won five straight. The Patriots have won ten straight. Now remember in week nine, the Giants did beat them 24 to 20. Eli Manning and Tom Brady, the quarterback ratings are just about equal. But we have to remember, Brady had the one blowout win over Denver, and then a uh, very subpar performance against Baltimore, so that kind of balanced out. So it really those numbers are don't necessarily tell the whole story as we take a look at Eli and uh, Tom Brady in Week 9 after that win by Eli. Right, and, you know, here's the one thing that I, I really am going to put a lot of focus on in the game is how well the Patriots secondary, which is terrible, um, steps up to um, Eli's receivers. Because that right. secondary is the key to this game. Because yeah, the Giants have a, have a have a decent running game and it's strong and all of that, but their real game lies uh, lies in the arm of uh, Eli's shoulder and arm. Well, and let me ask uh, you this. Let me ask you this. Aside from their secondary, my question is: Can the Patriots get enough push up front to not give Eli the time? Because you can't leave your defensive backs in coverage that long. So can they even get that push from their front seven that they need to put the, to make Eli uncomfortable? Well, um, I, I feel that they, they, they potentially can because they put a, they, they did a really good job um, with Joe Flacco uh, trying to put some kind of pressure on him. He didn't break, but luckily I, they still put forth that great effort. Um, the one reason why I think that their defensive line is somewhat dangerous is because of Vince Wilfork. This huge man had four touchdowns this season as a defensive lineman. And just for <laughs> him to be able – to get to the ball so many times and keep his eyes focused on getting to the ball, he's the key uh -huh. to their defense right now. Um, so if he has a good game, the, the Patriots definitely have a chance to win it. But again, mm -hmm. you got to be honest with yourself. There's, that defense is just not strong enough for the Giants' offense. Exactly. And that's why, here's what I think, here's what I think the matchup is. The matchup is really going to come down to the Patriots' offense versus that Giants' defense uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, Matthias Kiwanuka, Justin Tuck, O.C. Umanyora, those guys, we know they're going to put, they're going to bring the heat. They're going to put a lot of pressure on Tom Brady. So, can Wes Welker in the slot, can Rob Gronkowski stay hot, can Hernandez stay hot, uh, Ben Jarvis Green-Ellis with the run, can they keep the pressure off of Brady? 
for long enough so they can put up enough points because the Patriots' defense has not really stopped anyone all season. So, right. you know, we shouldn't expect them to do anything different than that in the Super Bowl. We saw that with the Packers' defense a week ago when the Giants went in and, and rolled up 37 points on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, I I do agree that, you know, it will be the offense versus that Giants defense. This is the one thing that the Giants really may not have to worry much about is the Patriots' run game. Um, ben Jarvis Green now is good. He, hasn't, he didn't have a stellar season of any kind, of any way. Um, so they don't really have to worry about that rush. Of course, they're going to keep their eyes on it. But uh, their main focus is getting Tom Brady on the ground. Because any time you're able to frazzle Tom Brady, which is very difficult, you have a chance to win the game. Now, the only thing that they're going to have to keep up with is keeping their defenses changing. Tom Brady's a smart quarterback. He knows how to read defenses very well, and they need to stay on their toes just so he's not on pace with them. All right, perfect. So I think at the end of the day, we've got that Giants defense. We've got Tom Brady, who's really going to have to win this game. I'll go ahead and say this. If the Patriots win this game, the MVP is going to be Tom Brady because he will have had a monster day if they win this game. I don't think it's going to be the Patriots' defense really shutting down the Giants. I would say the Patriots are going to have to put up 30 points to win this game. Yeah, I agree. And um, I can honestly, I can say this comfortably, I guess. Um, if, the, if the Patriots have... A 14-point lead, I'd say, into the half, that's a win for the Patriots. Um, if they have less than 14, I'm going to say that's a win for the Giants because I feel Eli is a strong enough quarterback to come back in the second half and win the game. Um, so that's what my deciding factor is going to be. Check out the score right before the half. Are they up by 14 or are they down or are they less than 14 um, in uh, being over the Giants? That's, that, that will help to decide if Eli's going to put forth his fourth-quarter um, effort. All right, so here's the moment of truth. And the question is, who will hoist the hardware? Will it be Eli and his Giants? Will it be Tom Brady and his Patriots? Eli or Brady? Who will hoist the hardware? Well, let me say it like this. Sorry, Peyton Manning. Looks like your brother's going to have two rings. <laughs> And, you know, as I said in the pick segment, I'm behind by one game, so obviously for me to catch up, I would have to pick the Patriots and then hope. Otherwise, I'm going to lose it. I'm going with the Giants, though. I think the Giants are going to win this game. If I wind up losing the pick segment, then so be it. But i got to give the credit where it's due. And I think it's real interesting because the Giants, we look at, when you go back to like 06, they were looking at Eli Manning possibly being a bust. And look at Tom Coughlin. It seems like every season he's about to get fired. Now, yeah. look at what they're on the cusp of doing. If they win this next Super Bowl, that will be two rings for Eli, two rings for Coughlin as a coach. Both of those guys are going to be on the edge of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I guess, it's, I guess it's tough to be in sports in the city of New York. <laughs> <laughs> They really judge you hard on uh, on one day's worth of play. But you're right, you know, Eli Manning, Tom Coughlin, every single season, midway through the season, their jobs are up for grabs apparently for some reason. And then when crunch time comes around, they go ahead and prove to everybody that they are, you know, worthy of being on that field and worthy of playing in the big bowl game. Um, so, you know, I, I have to, you know, snicker at the, at the Giants fans and all of that, but... Uh, I understand where they're coming from, too. He's like doesn't show a lot of emotion when he gets back. <laughs> exactly. And it's going to be fun seeing this matchup of two elite quarterbacks, but I, too, think that in the end, it's going to be Eli Manning hoisting the trophy. And I had said some years back, Eli Manning, when all is said and done, he's going to have three rings. He's going to be picking up number two of those three in a couple of weeks in Indianapolis where Peyton Manning used to play because he's not going to be back there. I'll go ahead and put that out there. He's not going to be coming back. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, after their little um, tip that him and uh, Jim Irsay had, 
saying how they shouldn't have been talking outside of the family. It's right. almost guarantee that uh, Peyton's not going to be back, especially with his coach and whole head office now gone. <laughs> well, right, and, and that's what I saw with Irsay was what I saw was him peeling back all the layers of anyone who might be opposing the next decision he's about to make. And that has to be a big one coming up. One is getting luck. The other is going ahead and let going of Peyton, Man Peyton Manning and move into this next era of Colts football. Right, exactly. And here's one other thing, fans, that I want you to hear about and think about. If you're not a big sports fan and you're there with your husband or you're, you're there with someone and you really don't like sports, think of it this way. It's really interesting. Eli Manning's trying to get two Super, two super Bowls to go over Peyton Manning, the poster child of the NFL. That's a big, that's a big deal for him. On top yeah. of that, if, if, if Tom Brady, though, he's starting his fifth Super Bowl tying with John Elway. And then he's trying to win his fourth Super Bowl to tie Joe Montana, his idol. Because Tom Brady was at the game of so-called the catch. He is he from San Mateo. Catch. Yes. That's right. Yeah, exactly. He saw mm -hmm. that catch, and he, then he fell in love with Joe. And so now that drive that he's going to have to try and match Joe to be like his idol, this is exciting football. Yeah. It should be a good game. I think in the end, uh, we look at the confidence of Eli and his ability to execute. And I think the big difference, though, is the Giants' defense and the Patriots' defense. I think the Giants' defense can stop slash slow down Tom Brady, but I do not think the Patriots' defense is going to be able to slow down the Giants enough. That's where I think the game is going to be won and lost is right there. Yeah, I completely agree with that. These defenses, again, both people always say defenses win Super Bowl. Defenses win games. That's not true. Defenses give you the chance to win all these games. And with this stellar defense that they've got on the New York Giants, they're going to have multiple opportunities to put points on the board. All right, perfect. So we're just about done here. And we, of course, thank all the fans who have joined us all season long. And once the Super Bowl is over, we're going to be getting into hockey, NBA. We're going to be doing another Arizona sports report. But remember, Inside Sports, we bring you the best. You can follow us on Twitter, at The Inside Sports. And if you want to go to the website, it is www.officialsinsidesports.com. Any last words there, Mr. Goyle? Other than, let's go Giants. <laughs> nothing other than uh, nothing other than have a great Super Bowl, everyone, and be safe. All right, and believe in the book of Eli. I hope I don't get choked out by some angry Patriots fans, but I'm just calling it as I see it. I think the Giants are going to win this game. That's all. I was really so shocked when the Patriots came out as a three-point favorite in the game. I thought that was rather curious. <laughs> yeah, there's Vegas again for you. <laughs> all right, everybody. So, from the Inside Sports Studio, I'm Charles E. Smith, Jr. For Sean Goyle, this has been the NFL Picks of the Week, our special Super Bowl edition. Everybody enjoy the game, and we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.